today's book is a little bit different than some of the other books that we've read. This one is not really very much of a story. Instead, we're going to be taking a look at What Do You Do With a Tale Like This? And that's by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. And I thought this book was really neat because although it isn't really a story, it's kind of a collection of facts. And I love facts. I hope you do too. I love finding out about animals as well. Maybe some types of animals that I don't really know very much about. So as we go through this, I'm going to be t reading the text, and I'm also going to be showing you the images. The art in this book is really, really neat. And as I do that, I'm going to be kind of moving the book around on the screen. So you might not be able to see everything all at once, but I am going to make sure that as we go along, you get to see everything on the page. And once it's a recorded video, you can always pause it if you want to take a closer look at something on the screen. All right, so let's get started with What Do You Do With a Tale Like This by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. So we've got an animal there and our text. Animals use their noses, ears, tails, eyes, mouths, and feet in very different ways. See if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book, you can find out more about these animals. So you can see we've got an animal there with a great big eye and our text. So if we start out, we're going to see some body parts of the animals, and we're going to take a moment and try to guess what animals those belong to. So our first one is, what do you do with a nose like this. And I think some of those noses look more familiar than others. Can we guess any of them? I can guess maybe one. What, maybe one of my favorite types of animals. Okay, let's see. So, if you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. So that was a platypus nose. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. So you can see the hyena. This is one of my favorite animals. If you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. So you can see the elephant there using its very iconic trunk to give itself a bath. If you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. So that nose looked pretty strange to me. Apparently, belong to a mole. If you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. So you can see this is the water, and the alligator is here, and the alligator's nose is just right here up above the line of the water. So alligators don't breathe water, they breathe air. So that's why their nose is right there. Okay, on to the next. What do you do with ears like these? So if we kind of zoom in a little. I don't know. Some of these look much more like ears than others, right? Okay, I can guess maybe one or more, but I think I can guess this one right here in the middle. Let's find out what those ears do. This is the one I guessed. If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to keep cool. Isn't that neat? So great big ears. That's really going to help that jackrabbit keep nice and cool in a warm environment where it lives. If you're a bat, you see with your ears. Bats use echolocation to see the world around them through hearing. If you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. So those little cricket knees, that's where their ears are. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're underwater. Now that would be a nice thing to have, right? Have you ever gone swimming and gotten water stuck in your ear? People can't close their ears like that when they swim underwater, but apparently a hippopotamus can. If you're a humpback whale, there, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. 
Now, if we think about a whale and we look at the whale, we can't really see their ears, right? But their ears are there nonetheless. All right, on to the next. Let's find out. What do you do with a tail like this? So we've got lots of different kinds of tails there. This is also a very exciting page because this is the title of our book, right? What do you do with a tail like this? Let's find out. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. So you can see the tail there. I don't see a pesky fly in this drawing, but we do see that tail kind of flicked up as though brushing off a pesky fly. All right, I'll turn the, this one this way. If you're a skunk, you lift your tail to warn that a stinky spray is on the way. If you've ever smelled a skunk, you know that's not a very pleasant smell. It's a good defense mechanism, not a very nice smell. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. Has anybody ever seen that happen? You seen a lizard break off its tail or maybe seen a lizard after its tail has broken off? Kind of neat, right? If you're a scorpion, your tail can give a nasty sting. So that's gonna be another kind of defense mechanism, right? A way that a scorpion keeps itself safe and also maybe the way that a scorpion helps itself get some food using that venom. If you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. Now this kind of monkey in particular is one of my favorites. That's a spider monkey. I just think they're neat. On to the next. What do you do with eyes like these? Now these are some pretty wild looking eyes, I think. Let's see what we've got. Can we guess what any of these animals are? This one is very exciting. I'm very excited to find out what that one's about. About these two. Let's find out what you do with eyes like these. If you're an eagle, you spot tiny animals from high in the air. So eagles have really good eyesight. You ever heard someone called eagle-eyed? Very good eyesight. If you're a chameleon, you look two ways at once. Although in our drawing here, it looks like that chameleon's just looking straight ahead, but they have the ability to look two ways at once. Let's go to this one. If you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. So those great big eyes help the bush baby see at night. Now this next one is kind of strange. If you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. Whoa. I wasn't expecting it. All right, on to the next. If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. So remember that was the one I was really excited to learn more about because before this book, I'd never heard of a four-eyed fish before. So maybe that's the one we'll look up in the back of the book where there's more information because I just learned about it today. All right, what do you do with feet like these? So this page is kind of fun because these feet are all different colors. What colors can we see? I see blue and pink and gray and green and tan or brown. So let's find out what you do with feet like these. If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. So you can see that chimpanzee there feeding itself with its feet. If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance. So that's who had those blue feet. Blue-footed booby. <laughs> booby. If you're a water strider, you walk on water. So you can see that there. That was those kind of tan or brown feet. If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. Have you ever seen a gecko walk on the ceiling? It's really, really neat. And they just move so fast and it's like gravity doesn't even do anything to them. It's really neat. 
If you're a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. So you can see the feet on the mountain goat are hooves for leaping from ledge to ledge. All right, on to the next. What do you do with a mouth like this? So we've got a mouth there, a mouth there, here. We've seen this fish before, and a mouth there. Pretty different from people mouths. Let's find out what animals do with mouths like that. If you're a pelican, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. So you can see how the pelican is scooping up a fish with its big mouth. If you're a mosquito, you use your mouth to suck blood. Have you ever been bit by a mosquito? I have. It's not very fun, but that's how they use their mouth. If you're an egg-eating snake, you use your mouth to swallow eggs larger than your head. Wow! So you can see the snake kind of unhinging its jaw and swallowing that egg that's bigger than its head. If you're an anteater, you capture termites with your long tongue. So you can see the anteater has a long face and a long tongue to eat lots of bugs. And if you're an archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with a stream of water. So you can see the fish here, the blue is the water, and the archer fish is shooting a stream of water at the bug that it wants to eat. And that's the end of the book, but what I really like about this, and I, when I'm picking out a book, if there's information at the front or the back, if there's a map, if there's a glossary, I really like that book because it helps me to learn more about what I've already read about. And sometimes kind of going over information really helps us to learn it and retain that knowledge or keep it in our head. So I was really excited to learn more about the four-eyed fish. But if we take a look, we can see how this book kind of lays out all that extra information about every animal that we read about today. So let's see, can we find our four-eyed fish? It might be on this page. Here's our archer fish over here. Point on the screen if you can find where the four-eyed fish is. I found it. It's right down here. All right. So the four-eyed fish. In the rivers of South America lives a fish that can look above and below the water at the same time. The four-eyed fish actually has just two eyes, but each eye is divided with separate pupils, irises, and corneas. So those are different parts of the structure of the eye. As it swims along the surface of the water, the top half of each eye can look up and watch for predators or insects to eat. And the lower half, meanwhile, is looking down to find prey or watch for danger that might come from below. The four-eyed fish is about 10 inches long. Before I read this book, I'd never even heard of that fish at all, and now I know quite a bit about it. And it's been a real pleasure being able to share that new information with all of you. Now this book wasn't really a story, but it was really exciting. And the nice thing is, even though we're all done, if there was any information that you wanted to hear again, you can wait until it's posted up on the Facebook page, you can rewatch it, and then you can use this time we've got at home right now to research and find out all about that animal or several animals from this book. All right, that is going to wrap up Storytime Live for this week. Again, my name is Val and I'm a gallery interpreter at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. I hope that this has been really fun and interesting for you. And I also hope that you have a great rest of your Friday. Thanks so much, everybody.